The Nazca Lines, unquestionably one of the most enigmatic ancient sites on Earth. Enormous ancient artworks that since their modern discovery, a number of individuals have attempted to, and seemingly failed to, adequately explain. Created to such enormous scale, many of these theories put forward demanded the utilization of advanced ancient flying machines just to enable their full appreciation. However, what many are not aware of is another particularly baffling structure that litters Nazca. Known as puquillos, they are stone structures which corkscrew deep into the ground, each connected to a channel of groundwater far below the surface. It must be noted, for many millennia the ancient sites these mysterious structures connected, and indeed the locations in which they are found within, have endured brutal episodes of drought, and for any ancient civilization to have flourished here would have required tremendous skills and ingenious solutions. And the Paquillos could undoubtedly be perceived as striking examples of this, displaying this ancient group's high level of intelligence. Not only that, but we feel strong indication of a civilization who had drastically more capability and technology at their disposal than that of the Incas. And although modern academia attempt to discreetly shrug off such astonishing works of ancient genius with the simple term pre-Incan, we believe that these pre-Incans they speak of were once part of a civilization far in advance of anything funded individuals will ever willingly admit to. As explained by Rosa La Sapinara of the Institute of Methodologies for Environmental Analysis, Satellite imagery has discovered a remarkable past function to these once mysterious spiral holes. They have realized that they were an ancient complex hydraulic system designed to extract and move groundwater over tremendous distances beneath the arid landscape above them. According to La Sapinara, examining satellite images has allowed scientists to analyze the movement of pumped water throughout the desert. Quote, all holes were interconnected via a system of tunnels, similar to modern subways. Each spiral hole appears to serve the function of a pump, filling the tunnels with air and directing the water to a specific location. In this way, water flowed to ancient settlements from where it was most desired, from areas of abundance." End quote. It seems that scientists have been forced to reluctantly admit due to the overwhelming evidence of the system's sophistication, that the original engineer's know-how and workmanship was of such high quality that not only does it rival modern water delivery systems, but even after several millennia, many of the paquillos still function perfectly. Furthermore, to have initially built them, the builders required as yet undiscovered advanced equipment such as air pumping technologies mechanisms far out of the realms of any academically studied ancestor. They also required an intimate understanding of geology, many meters below their feet, and indeed, the understanding of how they were going to manipulate future movement of the groundwater below. Also, intriguingly, many parts of these tunnels successfully passed through tectonic faults, as if they had prior advanced knowledge of these also. We personally find this discovery of the Paquillo's past function as nothing short of miraculous, making them some of the strongest evidence for not only a highly advanced pre-Incan culture, but of a technologically developed ancient people with in-depth knowledge of geology, hydrology, and many other seemingly modern understandings, developed through the utilization of advanced technologically accomplished study. They are undoubtedly highly compelling. China's U-22 rover, currently exploring the surface of our moon, has exposed an intriguing discovery, a mysterious object that many are labeling the hut. It is a cube-shaped curiosity, which oddly just appears to be resting upon the moon, as if once placed. In previous videos, we have examined similar anomalies many believe to be obelisks. We can visit other 
people with their habitation. We can keep track. If there's something very important to be developed from the moon, together we can explore the moon and develop the moon. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by the comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? With even Buzz Aldrin himself claiming there to be a monolith on Phobos, one of Mars' moons. And there is indeed a mysterious object resting on the surface of this mysterious satellite. A moon which not only appears to be hollow from one side, but is on a decaying orbit which does not make sense, almost as if it were a ghost of the past. Earthly calculations revealing that the moon should have disintegrated into Mars long ago. Yet the moon still exists, along with its mysterious so-called monolith. Yet I digress. The thing that makes these objects so interesting is how they seemingly appear to have once been placed where they have rested for untold millennia. No contact trail, no debris, dust plume, or disturbance at all. And most importantly, no crater of any form. Unfortunately, however, according to Chinese space officials, it may be a long time before the rover reaches the object, if at all. One major reason is that U-22 isn't active most of the time. The solar-powered spacecraft cannot operate during the 14-and-a-half Earth-day-long lunar night, nor for roughly 24 hours after sunrise and before sunset. U-22 also stays offline during lunar noon, as temperatures at that time can reach 127 degrees Celsius. What is this object? Further photographic study and detailed research into its precise location needs to be undertaken. It is an object which we find highly compelling. There are many unexplainable ruins upon our planet, whose age, or indeed true origins, are still an enigma to be unraveled. However, we feel that thanks to ours and many others' astute and devoted research, we do now have a very thorough understanding of past lost civilizations' capabilities. In some areas, there is undoubtedly more than one advanced ancient phase of building work. For instance, we feel that the ancient pyramids of Giza, ancient relics photographed from almost every angle, now, thanks to alternative research and in-depth scientific investigations, shows clear indication of at least three phases. These three phases are also possibly evident at many other ancient sites, in particular Peru. What's important regarding these phases is that although they have undoubtedly been accomplished at vastly different times in history, they are all incredibly advanced. In fact, they are far more advanced than any ancestral attempts to recreate them, which can be found throughout our own thoroughly academically documented history. This throws up some controversial implications. For example, did this ancient civilization, just like ours, develop to a point where they were capable of space travel? Or perhaps, a more interesting posit, were these most sophisticated and indeed ancient ruins left by a civilization who actually traveled here from another planet to begin with? Perhaps Mars? Since its discovery, Mars has been the subject of countless theories regarding the possibility of past life having once flourished upon its surface. There are even those who have proposed and relentlessly searched for an ancient advanced human civilization having once inhabited its red landscape. We have indeed shared a number of Martian theories, supported by compelling physical evidences from its surface, including the mystifying cleaning events which have been experienced by each rover while still able to move on the planet. Although many of the most compelling, possibly ancient artifacts found upon the Martian surface have indeed been covered by numerous sleuths, we feel the following object's possible identity may have been overlooked. 
pictured within a NASA image known as Sol 746, presumably taken on the 746th day. It shows a perfect sphere resting in the red dust. Although noticed, its puzzling characteristics, surprisingly, have yet to be linked with one of the most recognizable UFO shapes of the modern age, the metallic sphere. These objects, not only witnessed, documented, and video recorded on nearly every continent on Earth, they have also been the object most often recorded on many inches of unexplained NASA footage from low Earth orbit, lunar, and now, we feel, much further afield. Could this mysterious sphere actually be a crashed metallic UFO? Although spheres appear in nature, under the identification of land pearls, its origins would have involved tremendous amounts of water, something that has not been seen on Mars for an extremely long time. Could this mysterious sphere, photographed by NASA, actually be that of a crashed metallic UFO? We find the proposition highly compelling. Why did we never go back to the moon? Undoubtedly, man's greatest achievement, a feat which has apparently never been attempted again. There are many conspiracy theories surrounding the moon missions, some for good reasons and others not so. A mission to the moon, or indeed Mars, should be an experience which unites humanity under a common goal. Yet, alas, this unity rarely occurs. It is a well-known fact that knowledge is power, yet unfortunately this fact can often breed deceit and deception. For it is believed by some that knowledge only makes one powerful when it is concealed from another regardless of whether this always be accurate within reality. Because of this system of accumulating and protecting power, space-going nations have gone to tremendous efforts to conceal things from the public, and indeed each other. The United States government, for example, demands astronomers, astronauts, and many other workers at NASA sign an oath of confidentiality. Upon breaking this oath, you could face a conviction of treason, a crime which carries the death penalty. However, regardless of this, over the past few years, more and more individuals from around the world have bravely began to blow the whistle on these secrecies. Dr. Ken Johnston, former director of NASA's Department of Photographic Evidence, has stated that during his stay at the agency, he was able to see original photos of countless ruins, pyramids, and intact temples all resting upon the moon. Not only are there now a number of independent testimonies, made by numerous figures from within these space agencies, and the accompanying programs, confessing to the concealment of ancient ruins on the moon's surface, but we also have compelling physical evidence of such structures, including photographs released by NASA themselves. One was snapped by the Apollo 17 astronauts in 1972. Subsequently uploaded to the official NASA website, it was originally labeled as overexposed. However, as technology has evolved and computer software has become more inept at refining images, it has revealed something amazing. Along with apparent pyramidal structure, clearly seen within this image, some investigators have also highlighted a possible monolith in the foreground. Was Space Odyssey trying to tell us something? Predictably, many people have come forward attempting to discredit this discovery. Yet fortunately for us, in the December of 2008, the Hubble Space Telescope took some extremely intriguing images of its own. Images which seem to corroborate the once overexposed Apollo photo. Do these images actually show ancient ruins upon the surface of the moon? If this is the case, how did they get there? Or more importantly, who could have built them? Are these relics proof of an ancient space-going civilization? Or maybe extraterrestrial activity? Regardless of how they got there, we find their existence highly compelling and could be perceived as a possible motive for turning the space programs into black projects. Maybe we did go back to the moon. It's just most were never told about it. After all, knowledge is power. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care.